Hi everybody, Todd here and welcome back to Ask DRTK. I hope you're having a great week. Now I'm going to look at one of the most popular requests I get for headphones for home and project studios. They're the Biodynamic DT770 Pro 250 Ohm Edition. So let's check them out. Now the DT770 Pro have been a popular choice with home, project and pro studio users, content creators and just about everyone else for a long time. Now I'm going to give you as much objective information in the review today as I can. All test audio will be recorded through the headphones using my binaural microphone, so I encourage you to wear headphones for the best experience. Now looking at the logarithmic analysis of the sine sweep, there's a few important things to take note of. First of all, bass is fairly accurate with the exception of high bass that's underrepresented. So if things sound a little thin on these headphones, that's where it's coming from. Now there's also a dip in at around 3.5K. Now it's narrow enough not to drastically impact the sound of the headphones, but it is there. And then above 10K, we see a boost and you can definitely hear that in playback. That's something to also be aware of because it can affect mixing decisions. And looking at the linear comparison for more resolution in the upper frequencies, we can definitely see that dip around 3.5K and the bump up above 10K. Now let's check some music out. Now the log music comparison again shows that dip in the 3.5k area and the boost above that and you certainly can hear that in playback one versus the other. There's a, there's a certain kind of high end crispness that I hear on these headphones. It's a little bit subjective that's why we do the log comparison. Let's also check out linear for a little more detail. And on the linear comparison again we can see that 3.5k dip. Now keep in mind the linear analysis spreads everything out for more detail in the upper frequencies so that dip looks wider than it actually is. But then above 10k we can see that bump again. We can see a little more emphasis in those frequencies. I could hear it in the playback and I hope it translated well for you also. What about the world we both believed in? What about the word that made it so? What about the world we both believed in? What about the word that made it so? You show me beauty in life. You put me first all the time. No wonder I'm on a high when I'm with you, when I'm with you, oh yeah. You show me beauty in life. You put me first all the time. No wonder I'm on a high when I'm with you, when I'm with you, oh yeah. Now looking at the male and female vocal comparisons here on a log basis, the male vocal is actually well represented by these headphones. The bump above 10K has less of an impact since we have less information from the male vocal in that range. But on the female vocal side, the bump actually has more of an impact. And so you're going to notice that more when you're listening to female vocals. I heard it in the playback. Let me know in the comments below what you heard. And the linear comparisons make it a little bit easier to see why the male vocal is impacted far less than the female vocal. By the time we get to those bumped frequencies in the upper range on these headphones, the male vocal has very little information compared to the rest of the recording. Whereas on the female vocal, 
there's really an even distribution across a lot of these higher frequencies, and so we'll notice that bump. And this is a sample of spoken words, so we can compare the sound of the recording directly versus the sound through the headphones. And this is a sample of spoken words, so we can compare the sound of the recording directly versus the sound through the headphones. Now comparing spoken word on a log basis, we can see that my voice was fairly well represented by these headphones. There is that upper bump and I hear it more in terms of sibilance than anything else. Of course, the linear analysis shows a very similar situation. We can see that bump in the upper range, but really in terms of the actual recording, it's pretty accurate, but a little bit of added sibilance. Now the DT770s were not originally designed with gaming in mind, however a lot of you will use them for that application as well, so let's check out some game audio through the headphones. Now listening to game audio through these headphones, I'd say they do a reasonable job. I wouldn't call the environment expansive sounding at all, but I could hear the sound in the game. And so I was aware of what was going on, albeit with a less than ideal representation of the spatial environment. Now taking a look at the build quality of these headphones, I have to say they are well made. They have a metal band all the way around, so plenty of strength moving them in and out. They also have quite a bit of lateral articulation from that, so really good that way. The ear cups themselves though have very limited range of motion, so it can be a fit issue for some people. I haven't found it to be a problem, but just something to be aware of. Now they have velour pads around the ears. These are the limited edition black models, so they're black. You also see them with the light gray pads, but they're very comfortable to wear. The, uh, the cables themselves are exposed, so if you ever catch them or anything, you may have to do a repair. And the same applies to the main cable on these headphones. It's permanently attached. So you may have to break out a soldering iron if anything happens. Now the 250 ohm version comes with a coil cable. It's about three meters long, so plenty of room there. It has a 3.5 millimeter jack, pretty standard as far as what we get nowadays, but there is a quarter inch adapter. So you can be able to use this with a lot of devices. No issues there. Overall, I would say the build quality is very good. You can expect them to be durable for a long time. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on features and specifications for these headphones. There'll be links in the description below. But of course, they're a 250 ohm headphone. I haven't found any issues driving them for most audio interfaces, but some users do prefer to use a headphone amplifier. One thing that I will say is notable about them is their isolation is less than you would expect. You only get about 18 dB of isolation from these headphones. So, Quite a bit less than many other studio headphones that I've looked at, but certainly usable in many applications. So after all those tests, let me give you my final thoughts. There's a reason why these headphones have been popular for so long. They do provide a fairly accurate representation of what you're listening to, albeit with a few deviations, in particular the upper frequencies that can tend to make these headphones sound sibilant and brittle. But that's not to say you can't make good mix decisions with them. You absolutely can. They're suitable for casual listening. And of course, for tracking, they are a closed back headphone, although the performance for isolation is somewhat less than other studio headphones we've looked at. Now, they're kind of bulky, a little bit heavy. Wouldn't recommend them to transport around. They don't fold up, but they are durable and you can get a lot of hours on these in the studio use. So if you're recording music, if you're doing voiceover, podcasts, production, content creation, these are a good choice. I would recommend them. And if you're interested in other headphone options, I'd recommend you check out one of these videos. As always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate having you here today. Take care and I'll see you next time.